Okay, my outstanding friends, this is going to be fabulous. Pudding stone, you ever hear of that? Well, it's a conglomerate, they call it. But guess what? The conglomerate is, is all packed in with hematite. All right, here's what it says. The grayish purple to grayish red conglomerations and sandstone is cemented largely by hematite. Well, what is hematite? Hematite is common iron oxide. The formula is Fe2O3. Guess what that is? Blood. <laughs> that is blood. And they, some of them call it bloodstone. They understand what it is, but, you know, the, the geologists don't. You see this? I've been talking about this for many, many years. Fe2O3, iron oxides. It, it changes the different st states. They find it in bloodstone. Ferrous oxides, red, hematite, iron ore, iron oxides, it's all from blood. And then, in, in addition to that, there is a ton of transition metals in blood. So you not only have the iron, which is a transition metal, you have all the other transition metals. And that's what call it, creates all the colors, just like this one here I have in my microscope. And we're going to look at this a little closer in a second. All right, truth is in the pudding. <laughs> truth is in the eating. All right, the real worth, success, or effectiveness of anything can only be determined by putting it to the test. Okay, so we're going to put pudding stone to the test. Well, what is pudding stone? Its popular name applies to a conglomerate, a big ball of little bitty pieces. It consists of distinctly rounded pebbles whose colors contrast sharply, all kind of different colors, with the color of the finer grained, often sandy matrix of cement surrounding them. So they're in a matrix of goo. Well, what is the goo made out of? The goo is made out of hematite. All right, here's the key right here. The conglomerates consist of pebbles and cobbles and quartz and quartzite and sandstone, red and gray chert, red shale, grayish purple to grayish red conglomerate and sandstone cemented largely by hematite. I think I've already showed you, but hematite is ferrous oxides, is blood, Fe2O3. Now let's talk about the iron oxides and why the different colors are in these these particular types of um, stones. Why are they all these different colors? Okay, my friends, the truth of the matter is, is that lungs primarily are the pudding stones. And what are all these colors? Well, those are the transition metals. So what? Well, here's what. You see all these different states of oxidation these plus two, plus three, plus five, all that. Well, that means they can combine with other things that are on the periodic chart. Th these are where the transition metals are. They are transporters of other molecules back and forth through your body to deliver and pick up stuff. That's what they do. They are in the blood and they are in the lungs. And, and, well, they're in the blood, so obviously they're in the lungs, but they're really saturated in the lungs. And the oxidation states change in the lungs because they're going in there with depleted oxygen. They're coming back out with a lot of oxygen, but at the same time, they're going through the liver to clean up all these nasty things that are in your body. And, and they're doing all kinds of chemistry. Basically, that's what it is. It's a chemistry lab. It takes the expended blood and the expended particles that are just trash, and it separates them out. It says, here, here's some more oxygen. You go and deliver that to the muscles, and here, here's some garbage. Bring over that to the liver, and here, take this down to the kidneys, and get all that crap out of here, and then you're good. Plus, at the same time, pick up some of that good stuff down the intestines and bring it up to somewhere else it needs. The eyeballs need it. Whatever. Your body knows exactly what to do. It's an absolutely exquisite piece of machinery. Okay, so now that we know where all of these different colors come from, they are what they call seeds. They're, they're crystal seeds from those transition metals that are inside of the alveoli, the little holes in the lungs. And then they crystallize and those crystals grow in those holes and that's why they're different colors. 
And uh, I mean, I have literally bazillions of them around here. I mean, I have them coming out of my ears. And I have basically every type that they show. Um, they're all over the place. Right? And so, what, you, you can look at these and find them everywhere. When you see them and they have these inclusions in them and all of these different little, uh, like, something like this. This is probably from a liver where it has very few inclusions. It's, it's pretty much homogenous. Then you get other ones that are like this that are completely... You see the little holes and the little passageways through there? That's where the blood ran. They call them mud crocs. <laughs> That's blood crocs. And I, I got them underneath the microscope here. And even, even like this one here, like it's a little chipmunk lung or something. I don't know. You see the size of that thing? That's a lung. I'll put it under a microscope. You see it? It's, it's, this stuff is amazing. That's a lung. That's a, that's a lot of them have that particular style look to them. That right there. Now, if you cut that across, you would see all of these different colors in there. That's, and I'll look at this in a microscope. That's where the air entered into that lung. And that little orange flap here. I don't know how much you can see of this. But that orange flap, hold on, let me get a little light, is the little tag, they call it the interstitial latch, latch now. Well, I do anyway. <laughs> and that's what held this lung in at the bottom. And then there would have been another little one at the top. And that kept from floating around in your body. And I have the same thing in mine. Watch, here. Here's, here's one that was DNA tested. All right, and it was human. This is human. Right, and that's where that latch is at the bottom, just like I showed you the latch on this one here. All right, this is from a different style type of lung, but, you know, from some different creature. Or it might even be from a similar creature. When it flattens out, it has that same look to it. But that's where that flap is at the bottom. And you see, this one had a flap at the top that grabbed a hold of it to hold it in place. And this one is really, this was DNA tested, CAT scan, everything. And it's a uh, human. And it was from a flood. There were, all of this stuff died in a flood. I'm almost 100% sure. Now, let's take a look at some of the microscope shots. But the, the, these lungs are amazing. That's another lung. And here's the big hole in the center where it starts to, you know, let all the alveoli come around. And this, this one here, you see all the little black spots on the bottom? This looked like the guy died in a a lot of, you know, um, fire or blackness in the bottom of it. Either that or it was a smoker. <laughs> Here's another one. Remember I said they had a big hole in the back seat? They had these holes in them. And that's a lung, same thing. And that's where the latch is on this one. It's changed a little bit to chert. All right, now this is a lung that just got eaten up completely. So where these big holes are, instead of filling up with silicates, like that did, it just went open. So all of the holes in there are open. Where you normally see the plum puddings, and all these plum bobs in there, there's nothing there because it ate everything down to just the structural components of it. And this happens, this is different chemistry in different places. Like here's one, a lung, it looks like, to, I'm almost certain it's a lung. And again, there's one of the little flappy areas in the bottom. And this one here literally turned saturated to blood. It's just as much, it's almost 100% blood. And that happens in different chemistry. I can't 100% count for this stuff. There's another lung. I have these things, I have literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these. You know, a lot of them I just have in piles now. <laughs> I mean, what can you do? How, there's this other type. And that's where the black blood is. Now, it ranges from red to black. That's what your blood, in your body, it's red to blue. The hematite stays, stays soft. Like, see that? You see that? It stays soft. They can melt that down and make it into... Um, iron really easy the black stuff no totally different it's because of the extra oxygen all right so let's do a little microscoping see what we can see 
All right, there's another long. We'll look at these in the microscope. I have to put a little water on them sometimes to, to get them to rehydrate where you can see the colors. Okay, we're going to look at a couple of these in the microscope. i got to turn the lights off because otherwise you cannot see. But we're going to be looking here from this microscope down at all of these different things. Now, here it is up here in the microscope. Oh, come up with the camera a bit. Home in a smidge. Now, I can make, fool around with the lights and get a little different perspective. You see here. You see all the different colors? You see all those different crystals? All the layers and everything in them? Well, why is this? Why is it? Let me get a little focus in on that a little better. All right. You see the different pink and purple and all these different colors and blue and all kind of different things. And then you see them all in these little chunks. Why? This is cut across. Now, I can show you. You see this? This is what it looks like in the polished look. Now, so what we what we are seeing, and again, see that little flap? That's the flap that's on the other one. All right. Why are we seeing those little mud cracks? They call them mud cracks. <laughs> They're blood cracks. That's where the blood goes around, and it services all these alveoli, and then it pumps back out to the wherever you go they go to a lot of different places but you know you your kidneys and your heart and your lungs and your all of that stuff it has to plumb into this and that's why the blood runs through and picks up all these different products oxygen and so forth but you need all of these metals are in the in the blood and i have a i have pictures of a heart that's opalized and all of the blood transition metals are in there, all of those colors. I mean, there's some absolutely stunning colors. I might as well show you that, and then we'll look at some more. All right, that's an opalized heart. The same situation going on here is the transition metals try to find products that they can bond with that will make them stable. And in this case, the, the, or, or, I mean, uh, the bluish color found the ventricle walls and the heart strings and it bonded to them and they became stable. Now the, all of these different colors are those transition metals, you see? This thing had to be laying back like this. All the metals drifted down to the bottom and the plasma stayed up at the top. That's a heart. And that's all of those different transition metals found a way to nucleophilically substitute with what whatever is in there that was was volatile it would have rotted away they came in took it over stabilized it's a unique process it happens with opals and there's only certain areas that where these opals occur and it has to be that the chemistry in that area sat in the correct way and the correct acids and salts and the correct amount of blood was there everything had to be perfect to, to make these opals and they did and these are from the yoa region in australia very very productive region for opals Okay, there's a little lung that's in the microscope, and that's it up there. And if this was in, if this was cut across and polished, all of those little things would look like um, the plum pudding looking things. Now I'm putting some water on there, and you'll see how quick it hydrates and it sucks up the water and then you can actually see the colors a lot better All right, it takes a minute to, for it to suck up in there now I'm going to come right down close that water's got to work its way out of there. Hold on. You see all the little spots? Those are your plum puddings right there. That's your plums. 
And here's that red spot. Hold on, let me find it. There it is right there. This is where that tab locks in. See that tab right there? All that red blood next to it. Let me show you what that looks like in a real living creature. Let me turn the lights down a little bit. You see? Remember this structure through the center and this structure here and how that locks in. That attached this entire lung into the body of whatever this creature was. You see this? Now I'm going to show you what a fascia latch looks like. <laughs> I got another rock right here. This rock here has a fascia latch on it too. You see that? <laughs> Watch this. I got to back it off here so you can see the whole thing at once. <laughs> That's the same latch. That is the exact same latch. Now let me show it to you when it first came out of the ground. This thing was just looked like a piece of meat. Alright, this is when it first came out of the ground. And um, that's that fascia latch. Now, this is what it looks like in a living creature. Where is it? It's around here somewhere. Here it is. <laughs> that's the same latch. And, and all your organs have this type of a little emplacement. I don't know what this is. This might be a lung as well. I have no idea. But that is what the interstitium. And what it does is this isn't it's considered a new organ system now. This whole thing interstitch. Um, it interstitches everything together in your body and fluids flow through that. And that's how you get antibiotics and probiotics and all these things flow through your body instantly. And you took put something under your tongue. And almost instantly, it's everywhere in your body. It's, it's, and this is where it's going through, is this interstitial fluid. They just figured this out within the last couple of years. And here it is right here, live science. This is not too long ago, 2018. Meet your interstitium, a newfound organ. <laughs> they never realized this did what it did, does. So, you can trust me. And you say, why could we trust you, Roger? Well, I'm always right and I never lie. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, that's my wife. <laughs>